to all the dignitaries and all the participants i uh, welcome you all to this 21 day national training pro, uh, course on advanced in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector uh, it's going to be from september 1 to 21 2021 it's organized via, in collaboration between icr veterinary indian veterinary institute ivri regional station palampur hp in collaboration with national agriculture development cooperative limited baramala union territory of jnk uh, uh, i request all the participants i have some instructions for the participants for the smooth functioning of this uh, 21 day workshop uh, national training course uh, first and foremost you have to join as participant and not to present so please right now even right now few people were trying to present only the speaker is going to present host is going to present anyone who is trying to present during the presentation is going on either will be removed or will be uh, uh, disallowed to join the room uh, overall uh, the etiquette dictates uh, that uh, one should turn off their microphone when somebody else is speaking and that will be the etiquette during this uh, 21 day uh, uh, training course everyone is expected to turn off their uh, um, microphones when somebody else is speaking also Uh, this session is going to be recorded and uploaded to our youtube channel uh, that is kashmir hunt so i request all if you are not in an office environment please and please turn off your camera why because we uh, would want any privacy so if you are in your office uh, environment office setup we can, you can turn off uh, turn on your camera if you are not we uh, prefer that you do not turn on your camera why because Uh, people should be in proper decorum uh, for the uh, 21 day training uh, course now i invite uh, our uh, course director dr manjunatha uh, who is head department of veterinary clinical uh, complex veterinary college vidyanagar uh, karnataka uh, sir is going to provide our uh, welcome address please uh, start sir you are audible and visible please start sir yeah thank you mrit is a very good one to everyone Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries and the participants in this uh, 21 days national training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development in livestock sector through online course from September 1 to 21. It's jointly organized by ICR, IVR, Regional Station, Palampur, Madhya Pradesh, and NADCL Baramulla Indian Territory of the General Council. Yeah. Till now, the NADCL has conducted around eight online mode the training program in collaboration with the state and also central institute. This is our ninth that's a national training program or a national training course we are conducting now. Yeah, that's uh, usually it should be more than hundred participants. Our participant will be there. In this session also we have a one forty participants. Now it's a time to welcome all. That's an a guest. That's an a galaxy of an an a renowned person who is with us today for an inaugural session. Now, first of all, I'll go to welcome today President Dr. Triveni Das, the Honorable Director ICR IVRI. Because of some emergency, sir is not attending. In presence of that, you know, Dr. Arundh Kumar, the Joint Director Extension Education ICR IVRI, sir is presiding over this inaugural session by. myself and also the all the training uh, the participants in on behalf of everyone i welcome you sir dr arendra kumar sir i welcome you to the this inaugural session and uh, one more the distinguished guest the today's is an a chief guest professor hk choudhury the honorable vice chancellor the honorable vice chancellor cskh kushi vishwavidyalaya palampur himachal pradesh sir is the chief guest for today we function i'll welcome you sir for 21 days national training inaugural session on behalf of my side and also the participant side and also from an uh, organizer side and we hung in an uh, three the guest of honor today for today function the the first one is an uh, dr h sahu the director icr national research center of camel jorpur bikane I welcome you, sir, and one of our guests of honor, Dr. Anil Kumar, Director, ICR, Central Institute in Agriculture, Bhuvan Eshwar. I welcome you also for this inaugural session, sir. And one more of our guests of honor, Dr. Amarish Chandra, the Honorable Director, ICR, 
IGFRI, Jansi, Uttar Pradesh. Sir is also the one of the guest of honor for today's function. I welcome you on behalf of my side and citizen side and also the organizer side. I welcome all you, all of you to the, this inaugural session. And again, you have an organizer desk over here that will be the chief patron, Dr. Triveni Dath, the patron Amresh Chandra and Dr. Arendar Kumar, Dr. G. Sai Kumar, Dr. K.P. Singh, these are the patrons. Then organizing director, Dr. Ratne Nishana Madam, because of an, uh, some emergency, Madam is not attending. And uh, our Hobbins, I'll welcome Madam also. And our course director, the Sudesh Radotra. And convener, Dr. Dinesh Lokandesa. The co-course -co -co director, Dr. Rinku Sharma, Devi Gopina, Gauri, Dr. Ajit, Dr. Girish Adav, myself, Dr. Manjuna Dia. We are the course co co post director and co convener Dr. Prakash Kumar Rato and the, the Salim Bats and course coordinator Dr. Suhil Ahmad, Dr. Ravindra Kumar and one more most important person Dr. R. A. Shah is the training coordinator and our IT engineer the Farooq I welcome each and everyone for today's function and most important is our participants okay I'll wholeheartedly welcome all the participants and all the members and all the organizing techs and all the guests to the inaugural session of 21 days national training program on the advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector. Now is the time for an, an, an introductory address by Dr. Sudesh Radotra, the principal scientist, LPM. ICR, IVRI, the regional station, Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. Now I'll request Dr. Sudesh Radhatra, sir, for an introductory address. Dr. Sudesh Radhatra, sir, please. Dr. Sudesh Radhatra, sir, please, for your introductory address. Please unmute, sir. Please unmute. Sir, click the microphone icon at the bottom. That should not be read. Right now it is read. Please click on the microphone icon at the bottom. Can you click on the screen where there is a microphone icon at the bottom? Hello? You're not audible, sir. You have to turn on your microphone. Hello? Can you say something, sir? Hello? Hello? Yes, yeah, sir. You are audible, sir. Please switch on your video. Sir, sir. Thank you. Yeah, it's audible, sir. Audible, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manjunath. Uh, respected yes, Honorable Direct Vice Chancellor, Chaudhary Sarvan Kumar, Himachal Pradesh Krishi Vishwa Dalit, Professor Hendra Kumar Chaudhary Ji, Chief Guest of today's program, Respected mm -hmm. Dr. Hendra Kumar, Joint Director of Extension Education, ICR, Indian Veterinary Research Institute, is the President of the program. Guest of Honours of today's program, Respected Dr. Amrish Chandra Ji, Director ICR, Indian Grass Standard Fodder Research Institute, Jasi. Director A. Sahuji, Director National Research Center on Camel Vikane, Rajasthan, and Dr. Anik Kovaji, Director Central Institute on Women uh, Agriculture, Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. Co course organizing director, Dr. Manju Natha, Head Department, Veterinary Clinical Complex, Veterinary Animal and Fishery Sciences, University uh, Bidhar, Karnataka, and Coordinator National. Training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector, Dr. Rai Samacha, National Agricultural Development Cooperative Limited, Bamula, UT of Jammu and Kashmir. First of all, I on behalf of me as a regional station, IBRI Palampur, and on behalf of myself and co course directors, Dr. Inku Sharma, Dr. Devi Gopinath, Dr. Gauri Jarnath, Dr. Ajita. Thanks and welcome for accepting our request to grace this, grace and bless this 
national training course i especially thanks dr uh, prevendra ji director kam bc uh, deemed university icr indian veterinary research institute is in zatnagar for permitting us to organize this program the icr indian veterinary research institute regional station palpur originally originally known as animal nutritional research center it was established in the year 1959 with the objective of investigating animal feeding programs problems in the northwest himalayan region of this country later in the late 70s the mandate was expanded to carry out detailed disease investigations and diagnostic work as well at present the regional station have eight scientists from different specializations and different disciplines the research mandate of this regional station encompasses the investigations into animal feeding problems development of feeding systems using feeding resources of the region investigations into toxic and anti nutritional factors of plant origin for nature of toxins made of uh, mode of action and detoxification investigations with the livestock diseases in the region disease diagnosis and research and development for disease specific to this region and disease monitoring and surveillance some significant achievements of this regional center are evaluation and ranking of the tree for disease which from the major feeding resource of the hill animals development of tree use based questions for rabbit feeding also analysis and characterization of the anti nutritional and toxic factors in the tree for disease and pastures and identification of plants with bioactive plants can be metabolites for modulation of human function likewise systematic disease investigations and amelioration studies have provided a database on diseases of economic importance in the region our team has also been actively involved in different outreach programs we would like to thank uh, take this opportunity and thank to and acknowledge to significant research in contributions made by our former senior colleagues including dr nagi dr s s makkar dr r k davra dr bhupinder singh dr o p sharma dr t k bhat dr k p jatendran dr s sahu dr lal krishna lal krishna dr n p kurade dr a kanan and many others the animal nutrition lab of this station was well known for its contribution in animal nutrition research one of the one of the seniors scientist dr op sharma's research paper published in food chemistry in the year 2009 has been cited 1751 times our current team of scientists is working in the collaborative mode and have published research and review papers with high impact factor peer peer reviewed journals trends in food food science and technology reviews of environmental contamination and toxicology human with vaccine and into immunotherapeutics journal of animal uh, journal of applied microbiology research in veterinary science toxicon bmc veterinary research journal of food biochemistry european journal of agronomy animal biotechnology tropic and animal health animal health and production etc we have close linkages with the institutes <coughs> uh, at palampur like csi and institute of himalayan wild resource technology and csk himachal pradesh krishi vishwavidyalay palampur for infrastructure research and academic activities this 21 days national uh, training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development and rural sector has been organized to update the participants with the latest developments in the veterinary research there will be two lectures in each day uh, one at 11:30 am and uh, next one is 2:30 pm expert speakers from different fields and specializations and different institution from different institution across india would be delivering the lectures and i hope all the participants would be immensely benefited we the team from regional station ivra palampur will also be benefited and reach our knowledge by interacting and listening the speakers and participants lastly a book will be published by delivered lectures by speakers with isbn number which will benefit to the researchers and students of veterinary animal sciences i request all the participants to involve themselves fully and interact as much as possible to update the website thank you very much uh thank you dr sudesh abhatra sir principal scientist icr ivra regional station palampur for your uh, the extensive introduction address regarding your lecture uh, resource persons and also about saying about your institute that's an original center palampur thank you sir thank you very much now it's a uh, time for uh,
our guest of honor address the today our guest of honor dr a sahu the director the icr national research center on camel i will going to read about brief bio data about the sir sir is an born in aida that's an angor district of odisha he has completed pg phd from iira izat nagar in animal nutrition he worked as a scientist senior scientist principal scientist in an temperate animal husbandry division and also in iira mukteshwa and he was an aide in in case of an animal nutrition department cswri and also is acted as an director for an cswri his contribution in case of a neonatal cow for a lamb nutrition is an enormous on human ecology plant bioactive therapeutic nutrition and he is in an 500 more than 500 publication in a reputed journal and he is an edited eight books and i index about h index about 23 and i10 index about 62 and more than more than 2400 citation and he is awarded with so many awards few of them is a best researcher award 2020 international research leadership award 2019 distinguished scientist in a small ruminant nutrition lifetime achievement award the so many it's a maybe it will take another 15 minutes to read about the bio data now i'll request our guest of honor dr a sahu to address this participant and in our session sir please dr a thank you dr manjana ji uh this, first of all i thank uh, nadcl baramulla and ivy palampur for organizing this uh, important training program uh honorable vice chancellor hpk bb dr hk choudhary guest of honor uh, director central institute of women in agriculture dr anil kumar ji director igfri dr amresh chandra ji dr manjunath dr sudesh uh joint director from ivri who is representing director ivri dr hk gupta ji and uh, others who are seeing in the screen dr uh, surendra sharma ji uh, gorakhmal ji uh, manjun uh, then uh, anita singh ji so uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity and the uh, training program particularly on advances in veterinary sciences uh, that is uh, for livestock production uh, is a really uh, an important topic wherein the participants who are there uh, to learn in this 21 days training program uh, definitely they will be uh, acquainted with uh, different species of animals and particularly if we Uh, target the ivory palampur region that is uh, where i spent 5 years earlier and uh, all over india so uh, looking at the the population livestock population profile and also the production profile uh, india is definitely uh, number one in many and uh, not to say that is milk production egg uh, buffalo meat uh, ex- exports so many things Uh, but the per animal efficiency per animal production efficiency is far too uh, much far away from other developed countries other developing countries so in that regards uh, there is a lot to work lot to think of lot to plan so that the efficiency of production can be increased with less number of animals because the uh, we have shortage of everything means shortage of feed and fodder shortage of land shortage of um, uh, space for animal uh, in company in competitive competition to the increasing human population and urbanization etc so in that regards uh, palampur center dr sudesh adatra has already elaborated it has contributed to himalayan ecology in, uh, a lot and uh, Uh, i i being part of that uh, regional session i feel proud that i also contributed something during my five years stay there uh, at the same time since i am belongs to um, i stayed for 12 years at uh, cs central sheep and wool research institute of viganagar and then now i am heading uh, this institute in national research center on camel so during my deliberations i will definitely uh, spell out some of the issues uh, how to increase the efficiency of production and what are the uh, why the population profile is uh, means is a problem 
it, it is not a problem but we have to think of that we have to plan accordingly how why this population profile is changing this way or that way so in that regards uh, we will be discussing that but uh, definitely i thank you for the organizer for giving me this chance to uh, share my views uh, in this inaugural functions so we all need to work together uh, to address the issues particularly for animal productivity or you can say efficiency of production so that we can meet the future challenges which uh, is uh, uh, which is a concurrent problems uh, for every developing countries including india thank you very much dr manjana uh, thank you dr hey sahu that's a guest of ana the director of icr national research center on camel of the kanya that sir has uh, said about importance of a uh, topic what you have selected and also plan to improve the efficiency in both in agriculture and animal husbandry how this one uh, training will going to impact in the future to improve how the participate and to participate in a future for improving an uh, efficiency in face of an uh, both animal and also agriculture production thank you thank you very much dr hey safu sir for your wonderful uh, that and suggestion now is an a time for another guest of honor dr anil kumar the director icr central institute for women in agriculture the bhuvaneshwar i'll going to read some brief bio data of an anna dr anil kumar sir the sir is a done a pg in phd in case of livestock production and management sir work from a scientist to principal scientist and he is in an igfr i jansi then icr central uh, institute for women and uh, sir has been awarded with an uh, so many award that's an uh, one is an uh, esteem the award is an uh, boy cast fellowship award and he visited uh, so many in the country outside of in india like canada syria and he is uh, more than 47 that's an uh, research paper in a uh, pre reviewed both national and international journal and he is an uh, very good uh, in, in an introduction of an uh, uh, utilization of an uh, unnoticed vegetable and also forest plant chaya and is an uh, more uh, that's an uh, instrumental in characterization of an uh, bundle cowdy goat and popularization of an uh, area specific mineral mixture usage complete feed block and processing of processing of an uh, fish waste into the value added product of an uh, fish silage and model village de development uh, sir area of interest is livestock policies women empowerment gender and geography and plant genetic resources sir is having a vast experience in case of an uh, livestock production and management we are honored to have you here sir i request you to address our participant dr anil kumar sir please thank you dr manjuna uh, good morning to all and welcome to icr central institute for women in agriculture honorable professor hk choudhary sir on vice chancellor spkvv Uh, Dr. Harendra Kumar, Joint Director from IVRI. Uh, Dr. Amrish Chandra, my previous Institute Director, ICR IGFRI. Dr. A. Sahu, Director NRC on Camel Bikaner. Uh, the Course Coordinator, Dr. Sudesh Radhotra Sir, my Senior, and uh, other co Course Coordinators uh, and dear participants. I see a large number of participation in this training program, and I understand. Uh, this training program has generated a lot of interest among the participants uh, at uh, the focus for this training program is to know the advances in veterinary sciences and sustainable development in livestock sector we as a livestock scientists see livestock resources as a tool for improving livelihood of people through improved productivity enhanced efficiency which ultimately leads to increasing in income of the farmers then generating employment and it all overall caters to the household nutrition also but our primary focus remains uh, remains uh, as a tool that is the livestock species which we work on but at icr seva center institute of women in agriculture we are at the interface between technology and the society we look at the persons who uses these tools uh, that is livestock for bettering their lives i have the hindsight of uh, working with the livestock in the livestock domain your technology aspect and uh, now i am in the social science institute for the last 10 years so i have the benefit of uh, looking at both the, the the sectors and i can understand that we look at the at insti this uh, institute seva we will look at the issues that constraints faced by women and women in livestock sector or agriculture as a whole and the issues are very relevant to us 
for most of the complex problems in our society or in our lives really we need simple technologies therefore they we really look at the what are the problems in access to technology access to information and capacity building then how why there are large number of government programs and policies are there but why they are not reaching to the stakeholders and also what can be done what methodology should be adopted to reach out to these farmers so we are looking at the very practical aspects we understand that there are large number of technology that exist but there is a problem in its take off and implementation we look at the barriers in governance and policy enunciation at icrcy with a focus on human empowerment uh, I, i can there are a large number of technology ready to take off but i, I would may name two simple technology that is silage making and urea treatment of hay at uh, igfra there was an instrument uh, mobile urea spray dry sprayer was developed but it has not gone into the farmers so, so why this has happened for silage also there are uh, silage billers are there but it is also now has not gone into field these two technologies are very really important for the peri urban area and when we have entrepreneurs or startups in uh, home delivery of food items why these cannot be taken up as a startup this has not happened because the potential entrepreneurs have not been exposed to these type of technology there are large number of people who have shown interest in dairying who have worked uh, for a say la- over a decade in technology sector and they have moved into this uh, livestock sector and agriculture sector and farming sector when they can be exposed to these technologies they can be uh, developed as entrepreneur in peri urban area for say around 20 to 30 kilometers from uh, the uh, urban area yeah, another aspect that would i would highlight is in livestock planning data is of paramount importance even for gender also we do not have gender disaggregated data on a country scale for a large number of activities in agriculture or animal husbandry Uh, we do not have as of now data how many hours women work for say if a household is having 5 to 10 cattle what is the total number of hours that has been devoted for uh, these upkeep of animals so we need these kind of data very recently the, the livestock census has been uh, released and uh, my senior dr sahu sir would be uh, talking on uh, tomorrow on these aspects but this uh, livestock census has given the data for a whole up to village level but unfortunately they have sh- they are trying to show the data but they, uh, it appears that they, they are not able they are not willing to share the data uh, the, the, there is no proper coding for village level the district level or the state level uh, as the census data uh, does when we get we, as a policy maker should impress upon the dsd to release those data in a uh, in a ready to use format like census data is there up to village level so that we can integrate the livestock data for the village and we have the data up to live up to village level the land use policy the rain for the socio economy we have every other our data on the up to village level but we do not have it in a proper format the livestock data therefore we must impress upon the dsd to release the data in a ready usable form so uh, in a in a same continuum i would also urge upon the young scientists i see a large number of participants uh, for this training program to use GIS as a tool for livestock. This has not been uh, uh, seen uh, as a tool. Many, uh, I know, yeah, very many young scientists uh, are maybe knowing of the GIS, and they are uh, they are all free. For in life, in life, the many things are free. Uh, the G, the QGIS free. You can see the geoda, and there are large number of things that you can use freely for the livestock policy. So I would also urge upon the young scientists to use this these technologies. Uh, for the livestock policy and development then there are issues how many men and women are working in agriculture or, li- or livestock sector uh, we, we as a livestock scientist may be quoting the planning commission document that women contribute 70% in livestock sector and when i try to look into this origin of data i saw that uh, this data has been continuing for the last eight, eight plan so uh, we need to relook into the, these kind of data very recently in 2000 september 2020 the timely study has been released for whole of the country and this did by nsso and this has covered more than 5 lakh people and for rural area 272 112 uh, number of persons were uh, interviewed and then based on this uh, the data set has been released we have we are working as siva on this data set and i would just briefly i would not take much time i will uh, speak tomorrow tell on these aspects a few aspects that uh, there is differentiation between parties and of the persons women who work 
uh, but what the image that we get is 65 or the of the 100 women that are in rural area 65 was percent working agriculture this is not the same similarly 70 percent women work in live structure this is also not a generalization for whole of the india for the recent study that we have analyzed it, it, from that we can very authentically say that for the first time that women participation in livestock sector is 10.69 percent of the population and for men it is 10.8 percent uh, qualifying it, it with the time use we can say that uh, women contribute 45.8 percent in livestock sector and men contribute uh, say the remaining part so there these are the issues that uh, need to be looked into and uh, uh, lastly i must say that uh, uh, we must remember that livestock is a tool for us uh, for the larger picture of improving livelihood of people and uh, I believe I shall be talking uh, tomorrow in detail on these aspects and I thank the organizers for organizing this type of training program and awareness for the participants. I wish all the success for this training program. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Anil Kumar, the guest of honor, Director of ICR, TAWO, Bhuvaneshwa. For enlightening about is an human involvement in case of an agriculture and movement of an a technology from an, an animal husband to agriculture to the society and lab to land technique that's what is the way we can transfer our technology to the that's a farmer or a stakeholder thank you sir thank you for enlightening and so many things about as an woman empowerment everything thank you very much sir. now is an i have one more our guest of honor dr amaresh chandra the honorable Director ICR IJFRI Jamsi, Uttar Pradesh. I am going to read about some brief biodata of and song. The sir presently working as a director ICR IJFRI Jamsi, Uttar Pradesh. Sir specialization in plant biochemistry, especially the plant molecular biology and biotechnology. Sir is an exposed in case of an molecular diseases also and also diagnostic tool development in case of a sugar cane. He has went for a training in USA and also in UK for an, a mapping, linkage mapping and is an, an, uh, his visit to the China, Australia, USA and so many other countries also. Sir is uh, contributed in case of a sugar cane enormously in case of an, uh, the managing in a post harvest sucrose losses in case of a sugar cane, a introduction of a different varieties of a sugar cane and is lot many works in case of a sugar cane itself. And it's also now is working on improving the physiological efficiency of an sugar cane. The citation about is 1777 and H index about is on a 19 and I10 index about 41. He published so many national international paper in a pre-reviewed journal and he awarded with so many awards. A few of them is best scientist award 2019, fellow award in 2019 for sugar cane society, professor R. Kumar distinguished agriculture award Fellow of NAS, ICR team award, DPT award, so many awards. If I had a read about, it will take another few minutes. Now, I'll request Dr. Amaresh Chandrasa, Honorable Director, ICR IJFRI, to address our participants. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manjunath. Thank you very much. And very good morning to each of you, most respected Honorable Vice Chancellors, CSK, HPKV, Dr. Chaudhary. Uh, most respected guest of honor, Dr. Anil, is my colleague, long back, I can see him, He's very smiling, good face, and uh, very energetic, what I just heard him. Uh, Dr. Shahu is my colleague from the NRC Camel. Uh, course coordinator, Dr. Radhotra. Again, he is my colleague who, was, who has been with me for many, many years at this IJFRI Jhansi and then he moved to the Balampur. Now he has moved to the another institute. Uh, various co-course coordinator, including Dr. Manjunath, who is comparing this program. Dr. Trivenidak, Dr. Iverai, I think he is not joining, somebody else is joining this program. Other course coordinator, Dr. Rinku, Dr. Mazi, and there are many more who, has, who have been associated with this program. Very good morning from my own and from the Institute, Indian Grassland and Fodder Research Institute, Chasi. I welcome you all in this very important 21 days training program, which is on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector. So once again, I welcome you all in this very important 21 days training program. As you know that the livestock and the fodder, 
these two are the very com very important component and this works on supplementary and complementary mode when we talk about the livestock as we know that the livestock number of livestock what we have in our country is the largest in the world and at the same time we, i must say that we are also producing maximum amount of milk but when you talk about the productivity of livestock what we have our livestock that is not so good so how it is being uh, addressed and what are the major component to address to improve the productivity of our livestock some of the components has already been addressed by dr anil kumar but some of the programs one of the uh, associated programs associated with the productivity of livestock i would like to narrate here in very brief as you know that we are still lacking almost 35 to 40 percent green fodder we are lacking almost 15 to 20 percent dry fodder and we are still lacking around 35 percent concentrate though we have almost 8.3 million hectare area as a grazing area but at the same time i must say here that out of these 8.3 million hectare areas more than 50 percent is covered by sorghum and bursi and these two crops are gaining importance and we at a national institute we are generating and we are releasing many varieties improved varieties to improve the productivity of these two crops but these two crops are not going to be sufficient as far as quality of the fodder is concerned at the same time i must mention here that more than 50% animals are dependent on the grazing and when we talk about the grazing we need quality grassland we need quality pasture land and we have to improve the grasslands what we have very recently we visit, we visited bunny grassland as you know this is one of the largest grassland in our country in gujarat and the condition of that bunny grassland is not so good once upon a time this bunny grassland in the gujarat that was the modern bunny grassland as far as international grassland is concerned but presently the grassland of this bunny is not so good we visited recently and we like to have the intervention from different sectors who can improve the grassland and our major mandate of this institute indian grassland fodder research institute where dr anil has work where dr radhotra has work dr suhil is is, is at uh, at uh, at singer center and there are many more participant i believe that must be associated with this important and very unique institute in asia where we are not working only on the fodder crops we are also working to improve how to improve the our grasslands without improving our grassland we cannot cover whole country as far as livestock productivity is concerned and you know that the more than 50% uh, grafages what the uh, uh, what it comes from the different crop residues they are not very good quality one of the technologies what dr anil has just narrated just simple treat, treatment with the urea the quality of these surfaces can be improved tremendously but even then having this technologies this has not gone to the level and this has not gone to the place it should be that is the irony of the system but we are trying our best and i think with the help of uh, regular training what we are going to have this 21 days training some of the lecture and this in this direction i think dr anil will take the lecture and some more our colleagues will take the lecture and provide the input how we can improve our crop residues we have a different sets of technologies as it was presented by dr anil we have a silage technology this technology is not a new technology but there are many more thing has been done in the silage how we can generate small small silage packaging and this silage packaging can go to the farm can go to the uh, livestock owner and that can give as as a quality fodder at the same time we have many many non conventional fodder like as you know that the moringa is being developed as a good fodder this moringa can be used to make the silage now we have many sugarcane cultivars many sugarcane lines which is very good fodder not only as a green fodder but also as a silage so and apart from that we have uh, thornless cactus these are some of the non conventional fodder can fill the gap where we are standing today we are uh, we are in need of almost 35 to 40 percent green fodder to feed our livestock as we have maximum number of livestock in our country but we are not able to provide the quality fodder throughout the year though we have technologies round the year fodder production technology but still we are lacking in providing the green fodder throughout the year so to fill those gaps we have to have non conventional fodder we have to have some technologies we have to have some products which is always available for the uh, livestock owner and they can provide to the livestock and then can get by 
good quality milk, sufficient amount of milk, so that ultimately we can improve the livestock productivity. There are many things to say. This institute is also working to train the to have entrepreneurs, and we have developed, we have we have opened a, a center that is called Agro Business Incubator Center, where we invite some of the people who are who are the budding scientists who are just very young 20 25 years old and they have some of the ideas those ideas how it does ideas can be generated in the tangible form and we are asking them to come some of the ideas suppose the ideas what you have in your mind we like to change those ideas in tangible form so that the the, the, the uh, that ideas can be converted in tangible form can be can, that tangible form can be product can be a technology that can go to the uh, to the clientele so this way we can improve the production and productivity of our livestock we can improve the grassland uh, grassland productivity we are going to improve the quality of the fodder what we have so these with these words i would like to uh, invite all these young participants who are going to participate in this 21 days training program to interact with the uh, with, with the with the resource person so that we can have a better livestock in our country, quality livestock in our country, having high productivity, so that in less area we can have high quality uh, fodder production, fodder quality fodder. So th with these words, I once again congratulate the course coordinator, congratulate the resource persons, having these very important topics to have a higher livestock productivity and uh, having high uh, uh, milk production in this country. So with these words, once again, I thank you very much for inviting me to attend this program as a guest of honor. I'm very much thankful and I am here to support all the way. If you need any help from our institute, there are many colleagues who are joining this, this program as a participant, as a resource person. We will always be here to support you all the way. Thank you very much and giving this opportunity to be here with you. Thank you very much and best of luck for this 21 test training program on my side, from my institute side and my, for my colleagues who are joined with this program. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, Amresh Chandra. Thank you, Amresh Chandra, sir, our guest of honor, director, ICR, IJFRI, John C. for enlightening about the improvement of a production of a productivity of a livestock by increased production of a green powder and importance of a quality of a grassland and improving of a grassland. We are enlightened about the, what is an, uh, the fodder requirement of an, an Indian livestock and uh, how, what is the production is as of now and how best we can improve an, an, uh, grassland also and also green fodder also thank you sir thank you for enlightening and uh, the importance about and a uh, grassland also green fodder thank you very much now is an uh, time for an uh, address of an uh, chief guest that's our today chief guest is the professor hk choudhury honorable vice chancellor cskhp krishi vishwavidyalaya palampo now i'll re uh, read about some brief bio data of an uh, that's an uh, Professor H.K. Choudhury, sir, this Honorable Vice Chancellor. That sir has uh, completed PhD in Agriculture, that's a Plant Breeding and Genetics, and he has done a PDF in Molecular Genetics in the UK and also Japan. The area of specialization is Chromosome Engineering and Molecular Breeding, and he's the head of Department for Genetic and also Plant Breeding, and he ex head for Department of Agri Biotechnology, Program Leader for a Molecular Cytogenetics and Tissue Culture Lab. That's he visited so many countries, Australia, Japan, and he is honorary professor for uh, Japan and Australia for so many universities. And sir, he is awarded with uh, so many awards. Few of them is ICR Young Scientist Award, Himachal Kesri Award, Commonwealth Fellowship Award, Rishi Ratna, Dr. P.K. Deshmukh Fellowship. And sir, he visited Germany, Thailand, England, Scotland, Netherlands, Japan, Australia, China, and USA. And he is honored about 20 projects, out of that 16 are nat national and 4 are international projects and he published more than uh, 170 papers in uh, both national and international journal and he guided more than 34 students both MSc and also PhD. So we are honored to have you here sir. Now I will request the Professor H.K. Choudhury, that's an, uh, the chief guest of today function to address the gathering. So please sir, H.K. Choudhury sir, please. Uh, thank you very much. Dr. Manjunath Ji, uh, Honorable uh, President of the program, although he's not here today, Dr. Uh, Triveni Dutt, Director and uh, Vice Chancellor, Deemed University, ICR, IBRI. And I'm happy to know that uh, Dr. another Harendra Kumar, Dr. Harendra Kumar, 
joint director uh, extension ivri is here with us Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, Chaudhary, sir, please, your voice is not clear, sir. Yeah, actually, uh, there was no connection in between. So I have come to iPad now. Anyway, uh, Dr. Anil Kumar, Director, Central Institute on Women Agriculture. Course Organizing Director, Professor Ratna, Dean College of Agriculture and Research Station, Narayanpur, IGKB, Raipur. Course Director, Dr. Sudesh Radotraji. Iveri Regional Station, Palampur. Co-course director, Dr. Manjunath Ji, and co-coordinator, Dr. Rais Ahmed Shah, NADCL, Baramula, UT of JNK. Statutory officers, scientists, and scholars from my university, and veterinary officers from State Department of Animal Husbandry, Himachal Pradesh, other states, dear scientists, participants, and the scholars across the country. I'm happy to know that the IVR Regional Station Palampur, a pioneer center in animal nutrition and plant toxicopathology, rigorously involved in R&D, is going to organize a 21 days national training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector during next 21 days to online mode jointly with National Agriculture Development Cooperative Limited, Baramula, under the umbrella of the ICR. There are miles to go. Although we are uh, working a lot in veterinary sciences, still miles to go. If uh, I go to father of veterinary sciences, Shali Hotra, the time of Vedas, to Sir William Osler, founder of modern medicine and of veterinary pathology, I should say, if you compare these two, from Shali Hotra to Osler, that is from Ayurveda to today's science, today's veterinary medicine and veterinary pathology. A great person, Osler, he has come forward to establish McGill School of Veterinary Medicine and coined the term One Medicine or One Health. And a coordination that has been established between veterinary medicine and human health. Thereby, if we talk of veterinary sciences, we have to move from livestock health and zoonosis. This is first and foremost in my mind. There are many diseases we are coming across the country which are epigeotic and angiotic. Likewise, food at mouth disease, hemorrhagic septicemia, sheep and goat pox, brucellosis, tuberculosis, Johnny's disease of sheep and goat, mastitis, so many. 
Now, there is a challenge to the veterinarians, veterinary scientists. Can we think of eradication of these dreaded diseases in the time to come? If not, at the moment, can we think of precision and efficiency in diagnosis of disease diseases? Let us enhance the precision and our efficiency in controlling these diseases. This is a challenge. Indigenous knowledge of herbs, which has changed the face, and now the modernization that has come up in Big Bay and veterinary medicines, we have turned towards the allopathy, as I have named father of modern veterinary sciences, Sir William Osler. I just remember one example of a prolapsis at my home. When one of our buffaloes, she was ill in, in first delivery, she met with this prolapsis. And one of the farmers who's illiterate, who has never gone to school, no formal education, but still he has come over there and the animal was hale and hearty with his efforts. Although in our surroundings, many people were there who were looking after from medicos, veterinary medicine people, veterinarians, but still this illiterate person could do that. Where lies the science behind that? Can we think of linking that traditional knowledge with our scientific base? We have to link these things with our modern science. Where lies the scientific base behind these type of treatments by the villagers? The knowledge which is lying over there in villages, particularly in the mountains, just like Western Himalayas. Let us establish this as scientific base. This is also a challenge for the veterinary scientists. I'm a geneticist, thereby always worried about genetic resources. Of course, it is required for livestock genetic improvement and planning our production strategies. Let us enhance the quality and the productivity of livestock and not the number. Genetic resource, our country is full of genetic resource in livestock and the companion animals. If you just talk of sheep, goat, chibu goat, cows, cows, poultry, fishies, spiti horse, ponies, donkeys, dogs, and in mountains, I can say gaddi dogs, shepherd dogs, people they call them. Then many more animals, like you can say camel, Simultaneously, I would link here the other genetic, which has a tight linkage with our livestock, that is precious grasses. Here, over two directors, they have talked about uh, grasses, which is also very important. Without that, we cannot think of livestock. Now, the most important, where we have just landed in veterinary sciences is artificial insemination. The science which we have just come up for a technology which has served well in the society and results are there. This is artificial insemination. <clears throat> but have you seen there over there in the villages sometime? Have you noticed over there in the mountains, I should say, or in remote villages that the people, they are not bothering for certified centers of artificial insemination or going to the hospitals. But some untrained people, they are coming over there and going for artificial insemination. Once attempt, second attempt, third attempt, farmer is fed up and he used to go far. Just go leave this animal, it is going to be infertile. This is a big problem in the country and it's a, not a small issue. We have to click here over, we have to land here over and think of establishing certified centers of artificial insemination. This is a challenge for our veterinarians and government sector. Now, the animals are on the roads. Our cows, bulls, they're on the road. 
it's a big problem it has uh, it's a big balance that has been occurring over there across the nation what are the remedies behind that these are the technical issues where we are creating problem ourselves we are not bothering for the technologies properly to be followed by the farmers there in the villages and ultimately there is a gender problem also bulls are being thrown out and you can see in the cities bulls are on the roads now this type of problem how we can think of taming with the help of modern science of course we have to go for sex sorted artificial insemination sex to semen recently we have signed a mou with genus abs india the world's leading provider of bovine genetics and reproduction services and going for artificial insemination through this sex semen in sub indigenous cows some exotic cows and some of the cows there in the mountains crossed with this uh, yak that is curry <clears throat> we can think of 90% of success through this sex semen why not to opt for this technology how many bulls we require for our uh, sperm collection so 10% of the mistake which is occurring over there in this sex sorted artificial insemination that mistake can serve the requirement of our bulls let us create quality bulls likewise let us just eradicate this problem of animals there on the roads straight cattle besahara pashuon ka intezam karne ka ye mahatvapurna rasta hai ye ek raah hai we have to create models for small and marginal farmers in mountains starting from western himalayas to eastern himalayas if you just look people they don't have much of the lands people either they are small or marginal 90% people they are having very small holdings we have to create ventures for them we have to create models for them where they can rear cattle they can rear poultry fishery and uh, so many things in totality to link up with their agriculture and make it a complete agriculture farm next thing one of my friends dr anil and uh, dr amrish chandra ji they have very nicely mentioned here over about silage and grasses really it's also a it will be a landmark if uh, we are just focusing on these two issues our nutritive feed i have never listened there in the mountains that uh, people they are giving balanced nutritive feed to their cattle not more than 10% now if we are not giving this balanced nutritive feed to the animals then how can we think of quality milk quality meat quality wool so this is a big challenge for the scientists that we have to go for this creation of nutritive feed for a different type of animals and look forward for creation of facilities like silage and looking for certain important grasses uh, across the country livestock production technology from the livestock some of the products just like milk products wool meat and products and today we are talking of designer products just like chromium enriched products omega 3 fatty acids conjugated linoleic acid milk fat but before that let us first of all qualify our quality milk qualify our wool let us recognize our strength in the country uh, if i just say about western himalayas we have chigu goat that is pashmina goat i have just seen the blankets which have been made out of this wool people they are sleeping in glaciers but this water is not entering this wool what type of technology what type of wool quality it is happy ever popularized this wool across the country 
have we ever just shown our strength of this wool to the rest part of the country or other nations that this type of strength we have there in the mountains meat profiling if you talk of gaddi goats the meat profiling is urgently needed if you go to the market and even in other countries i have come across some of the literature that people they are waiting for gaddi goats it's precious meat but never we have gone for its profiling what is lying over there in this meat where these sheep and goats they are grazing what type of grass they are grazing what is the relationship between this nutrition and their quality meat their reproduction their body weight if i talk to this uh, gaddi goats they are even grazing niru grass in alpine regions of western himalayas and it's a precious grass of world class value if we are strengthening on these issues these are the challenges let us show our strength which we are having in the country and to project it at national and international level then we can think of designer products then and only then but before that let us understand our strength let us identify those people who have this indigenous technical know how make their videos put them on your website collectively at one portal so that all the veterinarians they come to know where lies the strength with these people who have this traditional knowledge and that has a scientific base let us link up this traditional knowledge with the scientific base and make a big story to let the whole world know what strength we have in our country of course if we want to move ahead we need industrial linkage our mobile clinics we have to establish fpos where lies the strength of milk wool meat our uh, gaddi dogs then we have to move for this type of strength and create fpos linking with private sector <laughs> if i talk of this gaddi dogs there was a mention in man ki baat by honorable prime minister once upon a time about the strength of this about the strength of this uh, that the dogs what strength they have in their jaws that they fight with leopard and they kill the leopards then gis based mapping this is also very important dr anil has mentioned very nicely that gis based mapping is at most requirement at the moment we have published recently a book on hematological minerals biochemical and endocrinological profiling of cow and buffaloes in himachal pradesh and created a location specific data for that on blood basis so that we should know the profile of minerals biochemicals and hormones in the entire mountains different valleys this book we have got published in 16th convocation of the university which held on 23rd of august this year simultaneously mapping of our migratory tracks of our shepherds our shepherds they are just coming across various problems they are moving as i have collected the data they are moving from 19 tracks in himalayas and going towards plains in the winters and coming back so what about their nutritive feed because they are always in movement what about their reproduction behavior because they are not getting proper balanced nutritive feed now let us go for gis mapping of these migratory tracks so that their stay points should be identified and at these points let us go for creation of fodder availability by seeding those areas and providing quality grasses on those those hot spots where they are just taking uh stop is uh, while they are moving downwards or upwards and linking these people through mobiles 
on one portal one click they can just reach to the institutions the veterinary hospitals animal husbandry people and we can have access to these people if they are in problem in their or in the mountains these are the challenges before our veterinarians of course in the time to come we need multi specialty hospitals there in the institutions at least uh, where we can provide 24 by 7 service from our veterinarians our scholars there over in those hospitals to the regions these hospitals are going to be raised and luckily we have this type of hospital in our veterinary college i am happy to tell you that 24 by 7 services being provided by our scientists and by our scholars to the entire state even people coming from outside state and nice collaboration with ibri regional station palampur in terms of uh, just resolving various issues in nutrition as well as toxicopathology <coughs> we have to establish network in different regions this is need of the r we have to join hands in terms of line departments institutions industry and farming communities and bring them at one forum it may be state wise it may be uh, initiated by ibri from ijat nagar let us join hands in totality to come to know the modernization the need of the r new ventures innovations inventions so that these can reach to the last village of the mountains last village of the country bordering china i think this is a nice opportunity that many scholars they have come across at one forum due to this covid 19 pandemic although physically this meeting could not be uh, just you see started or arranged by dr sudesh and his friends over there at ibra regional station but he has made it a point to go for this training online something will be disseminated of course if practically we cannot show but theoretically we can discuss and let us wish for our scholars who sir are there today up to 21 days they will be going for sharing their knowledge their challenges and the finding solutions from various experts in different spheres across the nation in this area and i wish all success for all the veterinary scientists scholars in the time to come to meet all these challenges and let us uh, move with a happy note best of luck for this nice trip being organized to one and all thank you very much namaskar thank you the professor hk choudhary sir today's chief guest the vice chancellor of csk hp krishi vishwavidyalaya palampur hp for very very extensive uh, that's an uh, elaboration regarding the veterinary disease veterinary medicine livestock diseases zoonotic diseases how to improve in a diagnostic tool and how that's an importance of a 24 hour seven the veterinary services is needed in all over the country to treat and uh, each and every livestock to improve the farmer economy thank you sir thank you very much for your elaborate lecture now it's a time for is a now is a time for a presidential address dr triveni dad the honorable director icr ibri the sir is unable to attend in his half then dr aran kumar joint director the extension education icr ibri sir is chairing the today's presidential chair i'll going to read about brief bio data of an aran kumar sir the sir is a joint director extension education icr ibri izat naga sir specialization in case of an uh, veterinary gynecology and obstetrics sir as an assume dependence in his hand one is about a mineral based technology for research induction synchronization in cattle and buffalo he evaluated immuno modulator for resolution of an endometritis and better conception rates in cattle and buffalo a diet enriched with the fish oil to improve the conception rate and also he has an uh, patent for an obstetrical devices il i10 so just prognostic marker for an rfm the retention of fetal membrane and he developed uh, so many technology and he also is an uh, what is outsource that outside for an uh, so many institute that's an ivri the fertility fertility 
the fetal uh, extractor and uh, he has a 12 institute project and by outside project is cost about is at 4.5 crore from dpt dst and so many other outside funda and he guided more than 20 master and doctoral student he published more than 180 research paper he has so many awards few of them fellow of navs the professor nil lorgel memorial award gb singh memorial award and he has a best teacher award and also best division award in collaboration so i'm honored to have you here now we'll request that uh, and also professor anandra kumar joint director to give presidential address so please thank you dr manjunath my voice is audible to you yes sir audible Hello. sir please go ahead sir audible okay, sir okay. audible thank you a warm greetings to all and good morning to all most respected chief guest of today inaugural function dr hk choudhary vice chancellor of csk hp kv palampur our guest of honor director dr amir amrish chandra director icr igfri jhansi my friend also d19 united for change <laughs> if you remember sir <laughs> yes yes another guest of i can i can, I can remember now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. another guest of honor thank you dr my colleague friend dr shahu director icr igfri sorry nrc camel bikaner and dr anil kumar another guest of honor director icr Central Institute for Women in Agriculture, Bhuvneshwar. Course coordinator of this course, Dr. Sudesh Rajatra. Co-course coordinator, Dr. Manjunath. Friends, they are all participants. Really, it is a matter of pleasure to be here as a part of IVRI on this. training course that is advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector though i am very much delighted and every one of you will be agreeing that our chief guest has delivered a lot of things from animal starting from animal health to production and also raised several issues and they are resolving the problems what i talked to so this is very much helping to further veterinary researchers who so all involved and as well as stakeholders so really i also enriched from his comprehensive lecture or deliberation rather see then other two guest of honors from nutrition side has have also elaborated much of the nutrition invention and intervention how to tackle the indian scenario in various improved package of practices tricks techniques and technology which reach has to be reached yet to the stakeholders and other guest of honor dr anil kumar ji is beautifully and importantly narrated the importance of the data basic data generation statistics importance in livestock sector particularly in animal health disease surveillance and all the, the forecasting of the disease really it is a matter of pleasure to me to congratulate to all the faculty of the regional station of palampur being a part of ivri and uh, dr is particularly to course director dr sudesh radhatra now once three speakers as a guest of honor and one speaker as a chief guest has elaborated uh, almost every part of the animal health production and their implementation regarding the advances 
and raise the issue to the researchers, the academicians, and to the stakeholder for the execution. Now, uh, being a last deliberation as a presidential, I was thinking that what to talk to the participants, to my colleagues. Many things has been covered, but even I will try to, in your expectation, something by putting to your some challenges and issues. Though we know that everybody is talking sustainability, sustainability of the livestock sector. We know that dairy sector, among the livestock sector, dairy sector contributes a sustainability, economic development and nutritional as well as food security to livelihood. This we know. Because we know and uh, already speakers have cited the growth rate of the dairy sector is very, very fascinating, very, very interesting, 6.5%. So look into the growth. And if you, I will cite the data of the artificial, artificial insemination. In last 70 years, this is the first biotechnology who, by implementation of this AI, AI have increased a lot. That for cows, from 3.4 liter to 7.5 liter. This milk yield has increased at the farmer's door by implementation of the AI and selection. In buffalo, similarly, from 3 to 6 or 7 liter. Indigenous breed, also from 1.5 to 3.3 liter. Though Dr. Amrish Chandra has told much of the productivity of the animals, Still, it is a matter of concern as the per capital, per animal productivity in India is very less, hardly 15,000 liter. So, so we have a huge population of the non-descript cattle still also. He has also cited the shortage of the concentrate feed fodders and dry fodders. But look into the potential of the livestock sector. It still provides a huge additional income and employment generation. People are think, were thinking at earlier, it is a matter of only, it is a village, animal husbandry is a matter of the villages and poor farmers. Now, it is not for the alleviation of the poverty in the, in the terms of the entrepreneurship, startups. Many, many rich people are coming to this livestock sector, to animal husbandry sector as a matter of the prosperity. So it is a matter of really a make a prosperity. Earlier, data is also available seeing India is very rich in biodiversity and animal husbandry sector is providing 26% of small farmers' employment means they are involved in the, the livestock sector, so they are getting the income. Similarly, marginal farmers about 13% and few landless farmers also earning from this livestock sector. But the theme of this today, to think to academicians, to researchers, to stakeholders, only the same three pillars that for sustainable development, that is nutrition, or you should say first health, then nutrition and breeding. So coming to the health side, IVRI being a premier institute of health, and research and de development established in 1889 and dedicated to livestock research and development and reached several milestones. It is not the time to tell, it is available on the web website, but even briefly, many diagnostic, many vaccines starting from the Inderpest eradication. PPR, brucellosis, IVD, CPOX, swine fever, many more, and also many more diagnostics, advanced diagnostics, have developed 
for the growth of the nation for the growth of the life of life sector and the mandate of this alampur center of ivri has already mentioned by course director dr sudesh that it is to cater the research needs mainly of the uh, north west himalayan region for the feeding system and not only that the feeding strategy already they have taken a with earlier scientist and experienced person like dr op sharma and others i don't remember and don't to this mention here but they have leading to a very good package of practices and certain technology to benefit of the farmers particularly that agro climatic zone so really i congratulate the the faculty for this very noble purpose now even the coming to the health side the concern area as a control of many infectious diseases still their proper vaccination we need we proper surveillance proper recording and at at that state level then only we can cure and we can save our precious animal so we there is a need to develop modern advanced diagnostic say for dna based diagnostic and certain candidate gene for vaccine development for the emerging diseases so this is the need of our all 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 some part of this already covered our honorable chief guest vice chancellor dr choudhry sir and our centrally government also allocated a huge fund 30000 crore for the control of the vaccination of the brucellosis and fmd we all might be aware so people are also talking nowadays one health approach to control the zoonotic diseases because we know as a veterinarian we come to the in this profession novel profession because we love the animal the creature that we treat we cure which we cannot escape to, to society and led to the society so because we we are knowing that the these zoonotic diseases are very important and 60 to 70 percent of the they are communicable to the men so look into the this importance of this aspect similarly people are talking today amr issue antimicrobial resistant there is a global call to reduce the antimicrobial use in healthy animals so this is a time to think rethink revamp re re why we should use indiscriminate antibiotic to the our innocent poor animals when there for example when there is a suppose endometritis or subclinical endometritis or local region infection we should think for alternative to the antibiotic like herbal plants or herbal drugs that is alternative to antibiotics they are easily available and very less costly and eco friendly and there is a much much advantage that is there is no development of the drug resistance so we should there is a need to think to reach antibiotics in the application of the veterinary science for food system that among the nutrition part do expert has been covered this package of practices many thing i am not the man of nutrition but still we can say that genetics has created the potential in india but nutrition has failed to deliver that so still there is a need to a certain develop a technology and to implement them to high yielders particularly the bypass fat feeding to the high dairy cattle their hydroponics fodder and revise the agroforestry system revise the dfs model to stakeholder so can they can be beneficial to the in livestock sector as a livelihood need let to say there are ch challenges also climate change methane emissions emission gas changes are there we have to tackle them now 
important point third point coming to the that is breeding this part is very important as in earlier since the last 50 or 60 years breed improvement is slow because of the selective breeding or the uh, our purpose was upgrading by ai or and this by selection and this method for progeny testing program takes 6 to 7 years so we we are lacking of the proven bulls so that's why researchers thought for the breed improvement at a faster rate so now the genomic selection people are thinking and people have started our researchers niag and ddb people have started for the genomic selection gene chip based of selection in which the generation interval it only the 2 to 3 years so we do hope that faster growth will be there and also our dr honorable vice chancellor dr choudhary sir pointed out the importance of the sex semen is the need of our because we can manage the minas of the male which is a really burden to the human society so sex semen can keep up to 90% of the female and 10% of the males allied males that can be a choose for the better bull mother this also we complemented or supplemented with the using the assisted reproductive technology like ett ovum pickup ivf and ett now our emphasis should be given to more and more pure breeding as we all of us know pure breeding for indigenous breed like saiwal giri red chindi depending on the agro climatic zone simultaneously we should think also pure exotic breed for high yielders now it is a time to rethink recheck reevaluate review why cross bred because at that time we cross bred was planned in suppose in 1970 by keeping a pure bred hf or jersey and crossing the indigenous breed at that time it was thought that indigenous breed is having a climate change this climate adaptability and disease resistance and the exotic breed is having a high milk yield but that at that time prophylactic and treatment were not had available and now we should think that keep the pure bred exotic they can give more milk and also new dimensions of threat pitic and prevention is av available and climatic condition of the hilly area and we can say the metro city like pune and bangalore they are more more comfortable so we should rethink then why cross bred because then there are several problems so we can use either we should give more focus to the other pure indigenous breed and pure exotic breed so this is a burning issue and i i am not saying that this should be immediately should consider but at least this is a point this is issue we should have a brainstorming that in india we need to reframe the policy for the breeding if we want to culling of the unproductive animal so by culling this these type of animals and implementation of the simultaneously the assisted reproductive technology the potential faster gain will be expected and this high potential application of this art is will we can reach a milk yield up to the 5000 or 6000 liter per lactation in coming 10 to 20 years only so with this this is very important issue and others issue already raised and this means put on the platform it is very researchable better to the academician researchers i appreciate the uh, thinking and points our my guest of honors and also chief guest so with these words i do hope that this training course is designed to provide a concise and practical view as well as educational 
and motivational to all stakeholders, whether it they are scientists or SMS specialists or stakeholders. So they will be get benefited. But I will request and urge on you, those who are involving, keep open to have interaction with the experienced faculty, the different domain of discipline. So until unless, because it is a online course so designed for this, this calamity of the corona. So we should have a taking this opportunity in an interactive mode so it can develop a divergent thinking. With these words, I again thank you all participants, all organizers who gave me a chance to say few words, share our thoughts and thank you all. Thank you once and all. Thank you, the Professor Arendra Kumar sir, uh, to the President, the Joint Director of Extension Education, ICR IVRI. The sir is elaborated regarding in, uh, sustainable lifestyle development and health, breeding, nutrition, and also, sir, also is into per animal production regarding a milk production, 1L, in controlling of an uh, zoonosis, antimicrobial resistance, use of Ayurvedic medicine. He elaborately covered all the aspects of an uh, veterinary and also animal husbandry. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your valuable suggestion as a president of QS function. Thank you very much, sir. Now is the time for an valedictory. Now I request Dr. Rinku Sharma, senior scientist, ICR, IVRA, regional station, Palampo, for a vote of thanks. Thank Rinku you, Sharma, madam. Thank you, Dr. Manjunath. Uh, I'll be presenting the formal vote of thanks. So to begin with, I would like to sincerely thank Dr. Triveni Dutt G worthy and honorable director ICR IVRI and chief patron for giving us the permission to conduct this 21 days online national training course at IVRI regional station Palampur. I on behalf of all the scientists and staff of IVRI regional station Palampur would like to earnestly thank Dr. HK Chaudhary G, honorable vice chancellor CSK HPKV Palampur for accepting our request to be the chief guest and gracing the inaugural function with his presence and a motivating address. Our most sincere gratitude to Dr. Harinder Kumar Ji, Joint, Joint Director, Extension Education, ICR Iwera Izzat Nagar, and Patron for his apt presidential address and constant support to Iwera Regional Station, Palampur. I wholeheartedly thank our guests of honor, Dr. A. Sahu, Honorable Director, NRC on Camel, Bikaner, Dr. Anil Kumar, Honorable Director, Central Institute for Women in Agriculture, Bhuvneshwar, Dr. Amresh Chandra, Honorable Director, IGFRI Jhansi, for their gracious presence and informative addresses to the August gathering. We extend our sincere thanks to Dr. R. A. Shah, Training Coordinator, and Dr. Majid, and all others associated from National Agriculture Development Cooperative Limited, NADCL, Baramula, UT of JNK, for agreeing to collaborate with IVRI Regional Station Palampur to conduct this training program. I would like to sincerely thank our patrons, Dr. G. Sai Kumar, Joint Director Research, Dr. K. P. Singh, Joint Director CADRAD, Iwira Izzatnagar, for supporting all the activities at Regional Station Palampur. Now I would like to thank all the statutory officers and faculty of CSK HPKV who joined this inaugural function of the online 21 days training. Particularly, I would like to mention Dr. R.K. Kataria, Dean College of Agriculture, Dr. Dinesh Vats, Director Research and in charge is a project coordinator from KVK Bilaspur, KVK Kullu and KVK Una. Now I would like to uh, extend my sincere thanks to the course director, Dr. Sudesh Radotra, Principal Scientist, Livestock Production and Management of Ivira Regional Station Palampur for conceiving the training program and for his constant guidance. I would also like to extend my thanks to the co-course directors, Dr. Devi Gopinath, Dr. Gauri Jairath, Dr. Ajeta Ryalaj, and Dr. Manjunath DR, who have contributed significantly in the meticulous planning and conduction of the training program. We committedly thank all our esteemed speakers who agreed to share their experiences with the participants who would be attending the training. We also thank all the participants for showing interest in the training program. We hope that you will be enriched with greater knowledge on completion of the training.
I would like to thank Dr. Gorak Mal, station in charge, and all the staff members of ICR Ivera Regional Station, Palampur, for extending all the support in organizing this program. We look forward to useful discussions during the course of the next 21 days. Thank you, one and all. Jai Hind. Over to you, Dr. Manjunath. Our first lecture will start at 2.30 p.m. It, this, is, this is for all the participants. And the lecture will be from uh, Dr. A. Sahu at 2.30 p.m. Kindly join all of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's join back at 2.30 for the next session. Thank you.